These screws, you've seen them before. They're commonly used on cameras. They're a, you could say they're a type of security screw. They're interesting because, of course, instead of having a slot to engage a screwdriver, they have two holes. And, as a consequence, they're usually called by descriptive names like two-hole screw, which is very good. They're also called pig nose screws or snake eye screws. And you'd think, well, they're interesting things. I'll just trot down to the hardware shop and get myself a screwdriver. Well, you'll discover that there are virtually no screwdrivers available to unscrew things like that. And the reason being is that they're all a little bit individual. They'll have different spacings of the holes and they'll have different diameters of the holes. So getting a screwdriver that's going to fit them down at the hardware shop is not particularly likely. As a result, of course, you're going to have to make your own. Now, how are you going to get around that problem? Well, various manufacturers have got their various sizes, so chances are you're going to have to make a tool to do exactly the job you want to do right now. And sooner or later you'll come across another one and it'll be a different size and you're going to have to make a different tool. But that's just life as we know it. Here's another example and another one again. Here we've pretty much got the whole set. One here, one here and one here. Lots of fun. So... What tools do you use to undo screws like that? Well, what screws, what tools you'll use will often depend very much on the size of the fastener you're trying to deal with. If it's a large fastener and that the holes are quite a distance apart, you may be able to use something like the spanner, the spanner wrench. This one, the tips are not particularly pointy, but you could improve them. And of course, you can adjust this down so the tips come in fairly close. In fact, what are the, what's the spacing there? That's about eight and a half millimetres between the points. That's certainly too big to do any of those screws that I showed you with possibly the exception on the Fed 3, that's large enough. For that sort of tool, that might be what you can get by with. Certainly for the larger sizes. If you're really on the cheap, your a very stout pair of tweezers may do the job for you but I'm warning you if you start using tweezers to do screws like that the chances of them flipping out of the hole and scratching something is pretty high but they can help you particularly if you're doing things up rather than undoing them because often it's much harder to undo a screw than it is to do it up to a suitable tightness what else these ones. This is a pair of uh, circlet pliers. It's lost its return spring of course and the tips have been ground down fairly fine. Also you get the angle of those relatively parallel at the sorts of distances you're using. This sort of tool may well get you out of trouble but as I say just as with the tweezers it's a bit awkward to get that in the holes turn it and not have something shift come out of the hole and scratch something but it's a handy and a cheap way to deal with the problem but if you're going to be doing a lot of something you can probably do it with a special tool now here's an example simple screwdriver it's just been ground away in the center here to leave two points here and here and in this case, that would engage with these. Let's get this back in focus. This tool would engage with these screws here because they happen to be identical. It's nice and simple, fairly easy to make. Of course, it's tailor mode, you're only going to use it for one job. This one over here, different case that one. Now, it's a different size again, but unfortunately, these screws here, they're easy to deal with. They're not going to be especially tight. They're brass fasteners, quite small, 
they're not screwed down to a ridiculous torque. The ones here, particularly when you find them on the advanced lever of the Retina 2A type cameras, they can be very tight. As a result of being very tight, if you were to use a simple thing like this, with just two tiny prongs on it, there's a good chance that it would end up slipping and marring the fastener and making a mess of it. And what I did when I needed to do a lot of that was I used this tool here. The features of this tool uh, we have a, I have two pins here. I haven't ground down metal to leave two points. I've inserted two pins. And the, what I'm using for pins there was spring wire, piano wire. It's slightly less than one millimetre in diameter. This was just drilled, two holes at the correct distances. The wire pushed into place and held in place with solder. This has worked very well. It's very strong. The pins are long enough to just go through those fasteners and no more. And that piano wire or spring wire is exceptionally tough. It would be very hard to shear those pins off. You can put an awful lot of torque on a tool like this and you're not likely to damage it. Of course, it can be a bit of a pain trying to make something like that and you might want to try and make something simpler. I certainly did. I thought about what I might be able to show you as a way of dealing with something like that. So I've got this screwdriver here. This is machined to do exactly the same job. And this tool here, basically, I used a Dremel with a grinding wheel on it to cut out the section in the middle. And to shape those two pins, which are fairly well rounded, I used diamond files. Now diamond files are available fairly freely at hardware places, any tool specialist. You shouldn't need to spend a lot of money on them. They come in varying qualities, uh, but they'll generally do the job. And the advantage of a diamond file is it's a very hard those, those diamonds will cut away very hard materials quite well. The diamonds is basically a diamond dust and it's um, embossed into the surface of those files. Whether it's, I don't know how they go about doing that, but certainly it's in there. So I, I imagine they make a slurry of it and melt the stuff on. But anyway, it's very good. Eventually you will scrape the diamonds off the base, no doubt, and then the tools become useless. But... We're only talking about making one or two screwdrivers. And certainly using diamond files enabled me to make those little round tips. And they engage in exactly the same way as these two wires would. With a tool like this, it's not going to be as strong. There's no danger that this will be as strong. Apply enough torque on here and you will shear one of those little protrusions right off. I'm absolutely certain of it. Will that be a problem for you? Well, quite possibly not. If you're doing lots and lots of very difficult ones, yeah, sooner or later it's probably going to come to grief. And that wouldn't be the end of the world, because basically you'd just knock the other one off, machine this back up, and make two new points again. You could go on for a long time like that. But that's a nice cheap way of doing it. It's... Um, a handy tool, one that you can put in your toolbox. I think that this was the princely sum of about $5 here. You could probably get it even cheaper depending on where you happen to live. Here's my arrangement for my Dremel. And uh, as you can see, it's a very crude arrangement, but it's adequate. And when I want to grind uh, a screwdriver tip or something, I've only got to feed it into the, the cutter. I've got great control at that point. And this one here obviously is quite a wide grinding wheel. But the very thin cutting discs, they work remarkably well too. Particularly when you're trying to get in into a small area. But that's all I use. That's the Dremel. And uh, as you can see, it's not exactly a high-tech arrangement but it works remarkably well for me. 
and to shape those two pins which are fairly well rounded I use diamond files. Now diamond files are available fairly freely at hardware places, any tool specialist you shouldn't need to spend a lot of money on them they come in varying qualities uh, but they'll generally do the job and the advantage of a diamond file is it's a very hard those, those diamonds will cut away very hard materials quite well. The diamonds is basically a diamond dust and it's um, embossed into the surface of those files. Whether it's, I don't know how they go about doing that, but certainly it's in there. So I, I imagine they make a slurry of it and melt the stuff on. But anyway, it's very good. Eventually you will scrape the diamonds off the base, no doubt, and then the tools become useless. But we're only talking about making one or two screwdrivers and certainly using diamond files enabled me to make those little round tips and they engage in exactly the same way as these two wires would. With a tool like this it's not going to be as strong. There's no danger that this will be as strong. Apply enough torque on here and you will shear one of those little protrusions right off. I'm absolutely certain of it. Will that be a problem for you? Well, quite possibly not. If you're doing lots and lots of very difficult ones, yeah, sooner or later it's probably going to come to grief. And that wouldn't be the end of the world because basically you'd just knock the other one off, machine this back up and make two new points again. You could go on for a long time like that. But that's a nice cheap way of doing it. It's... Um, a handy tool, one that you can put in your toolbox. I think that this was the princely sum of about five dollars here. You could probably get it even cheaper depending on where you happen to live. That led me to this idea. Now here I've got quarter inch or 6.35 millimeter hex bits commonly available in all sorts of styles. You would use that with a screwdriver handle like this. This is a stubby, but you could use a longer screwdriver. And what I've done with these, because these are, these are quite hard. I've made one here. This one's fa fairly plain, as you can see. Basically, it's just got a U-shaped cut in the middle. And in that case, what I used was a carbide uh, end mill in a mill drill and basically I just milled away the piece in the middle. Now that one is set up to do those little screws on the top of the film advance shaft in a Retina 3C and later cameras because basically they just have a little slot cut out either side of the screw head. That drops in nicely. That's quite short there. There's plenty of meat. I don't think there'd be any problem with that. These two. One of these the larger of the two is set up to do exactly the same job as this tool. I've rounded those points off and I used diamond files to do that and it cut away that hardened screwdriver tips without any problems at all. I expect that in practice I would expect that this is quite possibly more brittle even than this. So you know, if you were having to do hard work with this, I think that most likely you could end up shearing one of those tiny little stubs off. The other one, which is a slightly different size, that one is set up the same as this. Again, I've done it in exactly the same way. I've machined that U-shape out with a carbide end mill and then I use diamond files to round those tips up. And I can see from the scour marks here that the diamond files, you know, they rounded those edges up quite nicely. And they fit quite well. And of course, that would be a very cheap way to make your tools. No, I found two commercial ones in my toolbox. Neither of them are particularly well radiused off. I did find this one. And this little hole cut out here, that's not square at the base, that's certainly round at the base. So that follows the same principle. These ones here, they haven't bothered, obviously. So much for that. 
It's worth having a discussion about the design of tips like this. One uh, aspect of the engineering of things like this is something called stress rises. Now a stress rise was the concept of basically when you have a, a an abrupt change in the material because of the way you've machined it in particular. It means that when you apply stress to something like this tip here, it's likely to snap off at that uh, point where there's the abrupt change. So sharp corners are usually to be avoided in engineering anything, if at all possible. These pieces here, you can see that there I've made an attempt to avoid sharp changes so as much as possible there's a gentle curve through here and likewise up the sides in this direction rather than making the sides parallel all the way up they taper gently and that's an attempt to avoid a sharp transition or creating a stress riser which would make them weak. So that's the, re the reasoning behind doing it this way and you will see the same approach taken um, for commercial tools of a similar nature. I may even have a bit here I can show you. So this one would fit these screws that screw on the top of the meter, same as the meter on a 3 big C camera and this one on the case here is exactly the same size. I would have no hesitation using something like that for those screws given that you don't need to torque them down like you're doing lug nuts. This one, this would do your rewind knob there. That's if you're disassembling the rewind knob. Most likely the chances you would want to use a tool like this would be more likely when you're trying to deal with a Retina 2A. Of course this isn't a Retina 2A, it's a Retina 1A, but it's the same principle and it's the same size. Basically you would use something like that, fit it into your magic big screwdriver, and it'll loosen or tighten that screw with ease. I'm quite happy with the feel of that. I don't think I needed to apply so much torque that I was likely to break this off, at least not immediately. You never know if you're going to get a stubborn one, of course. This is the film advance shaft on a retina, and that's the screw I was mentioning earlier. And instead of having a hole at each side, it has just a notch. And the screwdriver I typically use for dealing with that is this one which is very, very simple. It's just been ground away in the centre and the width has been reduced slightly so that the tip fits down neatly in there and engages those two holes. As I showed you, this tip here that I'd made, that would do exactly the same job. That fits in there nicely and with a suitable handle like this, you'd have no trouble at all.